Hello, I'm Jay Buckley, Technical Training Manager at Honeywell Consumer Products Group. Welcome to Module 3 of the Autolite Challenge Professional Technician Program. This module focuses on DIS, or Distributorless Ignition Systems, also referred to by engineers and calibrators as Waste Spark Ignition Systems. DIS ignition systems evolved from conventional ignition systems. These distributorless systems were first seen in high-performance racing vehicles. A DIS ignition system has many advantages. For starters, calibration engineers have better control of spark and timing events with fewer moving parts. For vehicle owners, that means fewer parts that can wear out and require maintenance. There isn't a distributor driven off the engine in a DIS system, so the engine runs more efficiently. The high voltage plug wire runs directly from the ignition coil to the spark plug. And since a DIS system only requires one coil for every two spark plugs, the coil itself is larger. In a DIS system, each coil fires two cylinders. Each cylinder is paired with the opposite cylinder based on firing order. So in a four cylinder engine, there are two coils mounted together in a coil pack, firing two cylinders each. Cylinder one is paired with cylinder four and cylinder two is paired with cylinder three. In a V6 engine, cylinder one is paired with cylinder four, cylinder two with five, and three with six. The ends of each of the coil secondary leads are attached to spark plugs for the paired opposites. These two spark plugs are on companion cylinders, which are at top dead center, or TDC, at the same time. We refer to the cylinders as paired opposites because they are always at opposing ends of the four-stroke engine cycle. So when one cylinder is at top dead center of the compression stroke, the other is at top dead center of the exhaust stroke. The cylinder that's on compression is said to be the event cylinder, and the cylinder that's on the exhaust stroke is known as the waste cylinder. This is where the term waste spark comes from, but the spark is not actually wasted. By firing the cylinder on the exhaust stroke, as well as the compression stroke, any unburned fuel left after the initial combustion event will be burned on the exhaust cycle, reducing exhaust emissions. When the coil discharges, both plugs fire at the same time to complete the series circuit. In a DIS ignition system, the polarity of the primary and the secondary windings is fixed, which means one plug always fires in a forward direction and the other fires in reverse. As you may recall, this is different than a conventional system which fires all plugs the same direction each time. This is why you must use double platinum or iridium enhanced spark plugs in DIS ignition systems. Using a copper core or single platinum spark plug will result in rapid wear of the spark plug side wire and rapid degradation of performance, usually in the form of a misfire. Autolite double platinum and Autolite XP extreme performance iridium enhanced spark plugs have a platinum button on the side wire to slow down gap erosion. Because of the demand for additional energy in a DIS ignition system, the coil design, saturation time, and primary current flow are also different than what you'd find in a conventional ignition system. This redesign of the system allows higher energy to be available from the coil packs. Now let's take a look at the components of a DIS system. A DIS ignition system consists of the following parts. The crank sensor, the cam sensor, the ignition control unit or module, and the engine control computer or ECM. The crank sensor tells the engine computer the exact position of the crankshaft during its rotation. It's a Hall effect sensor that optically looks at a toothed wheel on the crankshaft. The cam sensor is also referred to as a cylinder identification sensor. This sensor tells the engine computer the exact position of the camshaft. It too is usually a Hall effect type of sensor. On some engines that previously used a conventional distributor, this sensor may be similar to a distributor without the cap. The old drive system of the previous generation is used to provide input and drive the sensor. This sensor allows the engine computer to understand what cylinder is moving up on the compression stroke. It gives the engine computer the knowledge it needs to fire the coils at the correct time. The ignition control module, also known as the DIS module, receives input from the crank sensor, telling it the position of the crank. The cam sensor tells the position of the pistons and valves. The engine control computer, or ECM as it's usually referred to, 
manages the spark according to the engine load and throttle position. The ECM receives signals from many other engine sensors as well, including the intake air temp, the engine coolant temp, the throttle position, and more. The ECM is the manager of the entire control system and issues orders to the DIS module about when to fire the spark plugs. In DIS systems, the spark plug on the compression stroke uses the majority of the coil's stored energy, while the other spark plug, which is on its exhaust stroke, uses very little of that energy. This is due to the higher cylinder pressure that is generated on the compression stroke. The higher the pressure, the greater the electrical resistance or resistance to the coil firing. Accordingly, more voltage is necessary to overcome the increased resistance of the highly compressed air and fuel mixture. Simply put, the amount of pressure in a cylinder and the associated electrical resistance that it creates determines which spark plug or compression stroke gets the majority of the coil's voltage, and conversely, which plug or exhaust stroke gets the waste voltage. In Module 2, we covered how a spark is created in a conventional ignition system. Next, let's look at how a spark is created in a DIS system. You'll see the process is actually quite similar. In a DIS ignition system, an electronic switching device to ground is used in the coil primary circuit. When the switch is closed, a battery positive voltage of 12 plus volts is applied to the primary circuit and builds a magnetic field around the primary coil. When the switch opens, the voltage is interrupted and the primary field collapses, inducing high voltage pulses into the secondary coil windings. These high voltage pulses are carried by the plug wires to the spark plugs, which create spark at the gap, firing the cylinder. First generation DIS systems were found in GM 3.8 liter engines in 1984. They were rapidly adopted by many automakers. When troubleshooting a DIS ignition system, begin by performing a careful visual inspection. Check under the hood for the same kinds of problems you would look for in a conventional ignition engine, such as fluid leaks, vacuum leaks, dirty filters, overheating, and oil burning. Check all wiring for poor connections or loose wires. Look for bad spark plug wires, restricted mufflers and exhaust systems, worn mechanical parts, exhaust leaks, and other familiar kinds of problems. Be thorough. You may save yourself a lot of time. Now I'm going to walk you through typical troubleshooting instructions for a General Motors 3100 V6 engine. Most troubleshooting begins because of a no start or misfire condition. As with any no-star condition, we must verify three things, fuel pressure, compression, and ignition. Verifying fuel pressure is very simple on this vehicle. Just listen for the fuel pump when the key is switched on. Connect the fuel pressure gauge to the test port under the hood. You should see about 45 to 55 PSI when the key is switched on. A quick compression test will verify the mechanical condition of the engine. Using the spark tester, check for spark. Have an assistant crank the engine while you observe the spark tester from a safe distance. Testing for spark at an ignition wire will determine if the problem is with the 7x crankshaft position sensor input to the IC module. By using a spark tester to test for spark at the ignition coil towers, you'll verify each ignition coil's ability to produce at least 25,000 volts. Is the check engine light on? If so, the first thing you should do is connect a scan tool and read the codes. In this system, the ECM will substitute known good values for various inputs if and when a sensor fails. The car may continue to run, but it will be running on a default table of known values and will not be running at its best. This particular engine will not fire the coils if there is no signal present from the crank sensor. Connect the scan tool and crank the engine while observing the crank sensor. Is a signal present? If there are misfire codes, the most likely causes are spark plugs, plug wires, and the coil itself. On this particular engine, troubleshooting an ignition misfire is pretty quick and easy. Check the plug wire for good connections, corrosion, and continuity. Inspect the spark plug itself. Then finally, substitute a known good coil in place of the coil that may be misfiring. If you don't have one, you can swap coils around to see if the misfire moves to another cylinder. Next, let's check the igniter, or as GM refers to it, the IC module. 
During cranking, the IC module monitors the crank sensor input for recognition of the sync signal. The sync signal is used only by the IC module for synchronization at startup to determine the correct cylinder pair to spark. Once the engine speed reaches approximately 600 RPM, the ECM sends 5 volts to the bypass control circuit at the IC control module, causing the IC control circuit to become ungrounded. Conventional ignition coils have one end of the secondary winding connected to the engine ground. In a DIS ignition system, neither end of the secondary winding is grounded. Instead, each end of a coil's secondary winding is attached to a spark plug. Here's how we diagnose the IC module. Start by connecting a 12 volt test light between the IC module ignition feed circuit and the IC module ground circuit with the key on. Does the light illuminate? If not, we need to keep going. Next, disconnect the 7X connector C2 from the IC module. Using a test lamp to battery positive voltage, probe the 7X reference high and 7X reference low circuits. Does the lamp illuminate during either test? No? Then we need to investigate further. Check the battery voltage to make sure it's above 12 volts. First, turn off the ignition. Then connect a DMM or digital multimeter to the 7X low reference with the DMM set on AC voltage scale. Crank the engine while observing the meter. Is a signal present? Yes. Okay, let's replace the igniter and get this thing running. In this case, the igniter was the problem. But plug wire arcing can also cause a no start that is not immediately evident when the car comes in for service. Using a water spray bottle with a 5% salt solution, Spray it on the wires and coil packs with the engine running. This will quickly expose poor plug wires or a cracked coil. Remember, these are generalized instructions. Always refer to manufacturer's diagnostic instructions for the code you may retrieve from the system. Each manufacturer has individualized diagnostics depending on the make and model. Congratulations, you've completed the third training module of the Autolite Challenge Professional Technician Program. Thank you for your time.